Lisa obviously is uh, some of you who studied biology. I've studied a great deal of evolution, but the philosophy of, of evolutionary biology is sort of a new approach for me. Uh, what are some of the fundamental principles of evolutionary biology from a philosophical point of view that differentiates it from a pure biological point of view? Well, uh, I think that there are a couple of fundamental ways of approaching evolutionary biology philosophically that are important in uh, understanding it. So first of all, uh, I think evolution needs to be understood in terms of models. And I, I mean in both informal and formal models. My uh, understanding uh, comes from Darwin's informal models, um, which I wrote about in 1981. But um, it's also for formal models, so the ones you have in genetics and so on. Um, so you, ha you need to understand the evolutionary theory through models. That's the science. Mm. That's what the theory is made of, mm. is models. Mm. Um, and when you do that, you come to principle number two, which is how are those models uh, supported or confirmed? And they're usually not confirmed through their predictions. Um, they're confirmed through their assumptions. In other words, through empirical, independent empirical support for their assumptions, like um, for uh, a method of inheritance or for evidence for a selective pressure that, um, for example, if you're arguing about a heat maintenance, then you need to show that they lived in a cold environment. Mm -hmm. That Showing that is giving independent evidence for an assumption in that selection model. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of evidence that Darwin gave throughout the second half of the origin that is fundamental for understanding how selection models are, uh, or evolutionary models are confirmed. Yeah. So that's the second principle, is understanding how models are confirmed. That's different from looking at um, prediction, which is what philosophers are used to looking at in all the other sciences. Right, right. right. So, uh, so it's familiar. special for uh, evolutionary biology. Uh, so most people develop the models based on the history and then use that and its confirmation is in the prediction, especially in physics, for example. Yes. And you're saying that this is the opposite. This is different. Yeah. And uh, why is that the case? Uh, w well, it's one reason is that we already know the result of the evolution. Prediction is rather anticlimactic when okay. you know the result, uh -huh. no, number one. Number two, um, what you're trying to do is give an account or an explanation of how a species came to be where it was, or how a population came to be the way it was. It is. So again, you need to produce the prediction. The model is supported when it can account for explaining the way things are now. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, are, what are some examples of a model in evolutionary biology that we can follow that uh, explanatory process? Um, well, go back to Darwin. Um, he, was, he gave the example of uh, wolves, like timber wolves, and the um, evolution of uh, the bone structure in the legs of timber wolves. Mm -hmm. um, why did they have the leg structure that they had? He said the swifter the timber wolves were, the better they could catch their prey. So he hypothesized that there was selection pressure on the, bone, on the leg bones of the wolves again, uh, for having legs designed in a certain way with certain bone structure that was correlated to speed um, and acceleration so that they could catch the mm -hmm. deer or the reindeer and so on. And it was confirmed independently that that is correlated to speed. So that's independent evidence supporting an empirical assumption about the structure of an animal that is then correlated to fitness, namely, do you get dinner or not? Mm -hmm. And so the, the process was the seeing the model that, that wolves would have this kind of bone structure in order to 
in order to catch prey, which would increase their fitness level. And then the confirmation was an independent analysis of the bone structure to show that that indeed facilitates a, a, a higher acceleration. Speed and yeah. acceleration, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and so that, and, and if you picture a selection model that starts with a, a, a population, specifying a population, and then giving the selection pressure of b living in a certain environment, mm -hmm. having only these as prey, and then having to run fast to catch the prey, mm -hmm. and having to have the leg structure to have that. Those are all assumptions built sticking in your model. Right, right. Um, and the prediction of the model is that you're going to have a fast enough wolf to catch the prey. Right. Um, then that was a piece of evidence going into your model that was an independent piece of evidence supporting your model. That was not a prediction. It was a side piece of evidence yeah, supporting I, I your model, okay, yeah. That's, that's yeah a, that, so. that really works, that really works well. Uh, and so what, what is the, uh, the attitude of philosophers or biologists or even biologists to your approach of the importance of models? Everybody agree with you? Uh, not all the philosophers agree with me, the biologists all agree with me, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why don't, why don't the philosophers agree with you? Uh, you look so agreeable to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Um, basically, uh, almost all the philosophers agree with me because, when, well, it's true that when I first presented the paper arguing that we should understand evolution in terms of models, um, Bless later told me that he'd never seen such an aggressive um, reception to a paper in his entire career. Um, aggressive meaning not positive. Right. <laughs> well, well, he actually used the word vicious. <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but um, yeah. Uh, so, so that was the first reaction. But within five years at an international biology conference, almost the whole program was in terms of models. Hmm. So it didn't take long for this to spread through the community. Uh, so, and, and you know, other people like Jim Griesmer was writing in terms of models at the same time that I was, and, and John Beatty. So there's a little couple people who were writing, and Wimsat, of course, and, and those people were writing in terms of models. And, and then, um, so I would say most philosophers uh, agreed by the, or by the mid-80s that that was uh, a good approach, um, but not everybody.